At Ayla's request, I'm giving a brief chat about this painting, which has hung around in my mind since reading a biography of the artist, Evelyn Dunbar, born 1906 and died 1960. She had offered her services to the War Artists Advisory Committee, otherwise known as the WAAC, in 1940. In a letter, now in the archives of the Imperial War Museum, she asked if there might be possibilities of making a record of, I quote her, women's agricultural or horticultural work, anything connected with the land. And she adds, I feel I could do this with keen understanding. This was no idle boast. She'd emerged from the Royal College of Art in the late 1920s as part of a gang of artists who took their activities as plants men and plants women as seriously as their art. They made gardens, swapped seedlings by post, and some illustrated books on plants. Evelyn Dunbar wrote and illustrated Gardener's Choice, recently reprinted by Persephone Books. But Dunbar's interests extended beyond gardens into the land, owing to her deep affection for the Kent landscape, which began in childhood. Another fact relevant to this painting is that she grew up with the Christian Science Monitor, which arrived daily. She became a lifelong believer in Christian science, and her biographer, Christopher Campbell Howes, regards it as the foundation of her work. He explains, The Christian scientist trains the mind to exclude anything that gives a distorted or mistaken view of the divine universe. And his or her striving is towards the sinlessness symbolised by Adam and Eve before the fall. Dunbar, he argues, would have seen her personal mission to be a return to Eden. A further subset within her Christian science beliefs was that creation symbolised by the Garden of Eden came with duties and obligations to look after the world around you with devotion, intelligence and hard work. As a war artist, Evelyn Dunbar would have witnessed too, among other things, the work of the Women's Land Army. The WLA it was called. This painting, titled A Land Girl and What the Bull Bale Bull, was completed in 1945. Perhaps you, like me, have never had attempted, never had to attempt the dangerous task of taking command of a bull. You can see the necessary chain and snap link is held behind the young woman's back as she approaches the bull. He looks up warily, but is perhaps already smelling the contents of the bucket held in her other hand, which would have contained cattle feed pellets laced with licorice or molasses. Lured by that irresistible scent, he will eventually put his snout into the bucket and the land girl will deftly attach the snap link to the ring through the bull's nose. Meanwhile, as you can see, Dawn has broken and a beautiful mackerel sky hovers over the distant view as if in acknowledgement of the ending of war and the promise of things to come. Today the best known fact about Dunbar is that she was the only woman artist whom the WAAC paid on a full-time salaried basis. She died in 1960 at the age of 53 while taking a walk with her husband. Her death was wholly unexpected. The cause registered on her death certificate was coronary atheroma, but her Christian science beliefs may have prevented her seeking medical advice when it was needed. Her reputation vanished amid the rapid and radical innovations in art that came in with the 1960s, but in 1983, the Hayward Gallery exhibition Landscape Art in Britain 1850 to 1950 dragged out of the tape this picture and interest in her work slowly began to revive. It is a picture about bravery and hope, which is perhaps why it feels relevant to us right now.